you know, I'm learning every day that I do this. I learn something about, you know, this automation or power world that I didn't know. Um, so, you know, not only am I helping customers learn more, I'm also learning more and bettering myself for it. Um, you know, it's something I'm passionate about and something I enjoy doing. And, and I think, you know, not to kind of toot my own horn, but I think I'm good at it. Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. All right, welcome to this episode of Eco Ask Why. This is one of the, the fun episodes that I enjoy doing the most. It's the a hero episode, and today we have with us our our automation and power product manager from South Carolina, Mr. Jonathan Fuller. He's been at Eco a little over a year, and really uh, looking forward to this conversation to learn a little bit more about Jonathan to share that with with our listeners. So, Jonathan, welcome. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, can you just get us started by telling us a little bit about the journey? Uh, to your role that you're in now yeah thank you uh, thanks for having me guys and uh um so you know i started in in college as a electrical engineer and um when i graduated i graduated in december of 2010 and uh the job market was not great for engineers back then so um i actually found a job working in a call center uh for a company uh working and supporting on uh, technical support for some UPS devices. Um, that's kind of how I got my foot in the door. Um, so a year later, I was able to uh, move back home uh, to South Carolina uh, from Rhode Island, where I was working uh, for a year, and able to come back home and, and work in a manufacturing plant as an application engineer designing switchgear. Um, and I worked my way through that for a couple of years and ended up being a, a lead uh, team lead application engineer. and. Um, I just kind of got tired of some of the politics and, and things like that involved at the plant. So uh, I transitioned to, to an inside sales role and doing some quotes and, and things like that and reading one lines and specs and helping customers. Um, and so I did that for several years and um, I tried to, to get some promotions into outside sales and things just kind of didn't work, work in my favor. So um, I actually found eco uh, through a, a job posting website and I read all about it and got pretty excited. And so I, um, I applied and within I think about an hour and a half of me applying, HR was on the phone with me, uh, interviewing me right then and there, um, asking me, you know, who I am and what I do and why I applied. And so, uh, kind of went through the interview process with eco and you know, the, the rest is, is history. As they say, I mean, I've, I've been with eco for a little over a year now and, and I love it. Um, it's a, a great company to work for, and I really enjoy my current role. Um, uh, you know, uh, automation and power product manager in South Carolina. I feel like it's a it's a good mix of engineering and, and sales, and so I'm out in front of customers pretty much every day and getting to help them with some of their problems and applications that they might have. And so I get to kind of help them and teach them some things, and I learn some things, and you know, kind of go from there. So it's a it's a great fit, and I enjoy it. Very cool, very cool. Good shout out to our, our VP of HR, Miss Julie Hill, as well. There, man, on the uh, the callback response, sound like you uh you must have really triggered something. She want to talk to you pretty quick. Yeah, I was kind of surprised by that. <laughs> so let's go, hold on before we go too far. You mentioned college. Now I know you're you go ahead. This is your opportunity. So what uh, what what's your alma mater? <laughs> I'm a I'm a Carolina Gamecock for life. Okay. So I went to the University of South Carolina here in Columbia, South Carolina. Because I know when you cross that line in South Carolina, uh, it, 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 that really is the line. You, that, that's the real Carolina, right? Yeah, so, so we are the real Carolina. If you, uh, if you talk about USC or Carolina and you're from uh, you know, in South Carolina, things like that, people know who you're talking about. If you step outside of South Carolina and you mention USC, people think about that stupid school over in California and uh, – you uh, mentioned the real Carolina or Carolina outside of South Carolina. People think about that uh, that yucky blue color up in North Carolina. So, 
All right, now easy, easy, easy. We got a lot of Tar Heel fans <laughs> that are probably listening. So uh, you know, I, I'm in a neutral zone because I went to uh, uh, Old Dominion, so I, I don't have a dog in this fight. But uh, it's fun. It's fun to hear the dogs bark at each other. So anyway, thank you for that, Jonathan. I mean, it's really cool uh, to hear some of your 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 story on how you got to where you were. So you know, you're in industry a lot, man. You, you you're in front of customers. You're talking with with end users and engineers. What do you see as some of the greatest challenges that industry is going to have over the next, you know, three to five years? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, some of the challenge, and I experienced a lot of this when I worked at the plant. It's just the, uh, you know, as they say, the changing of the guard. So, I mean, you've got a lot of people that are uh, getting a little bit older and, and getting ready to retire and just the wealth of knowledge that they have. I mean, they just they have so much knowledge. And then you've got young guys like me or, um, you know, fresh out of college that are coming in and and they're expected to pick up that slack and start exactly where this other these other people left off. And there's just no way for them to know the amount of knowledge that these other people that are getting ready to retire have. So some of the biggest issues that, you know, we're going to face in the industry coming up is just the lack of knowledge. Um, and I think that's a, you know, a great place for, you know, people like us at Eco to kind of step in and help, you know, because we've been doing this for a while. And so we can kind of help this new generation with some of that knowledge gap that might be out there. Yeah. And it's what I look forward to doing every day. You know, I, I enjoy being able to go to customers and, and talk with them and kind of teach them about some of the stuff that I know and that I do and, and kind of help them uh, pass that knowledge along. Absolutely. I mean, that that is a, a key point, man, that knowledge gap, you know, is, is, it's retiring out, you know, and, you know, one thing we've talked about you and I offline is, is mentors and the importance of a mentor. Uh, and no, there's no time greater than now in industry in, in the United States than to, if, if you're, if you're out there and you have that experience, it's a great time to be a mentor to somebody. Right. And, and, and if you're also, if you're inexperienced, try to find that mentor, someone that, that, that can, can guide you and direct you in your career path. So on that same topic, who has been a great mentor for you in your career and why? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, I've had a couple of good mentors and, uh, you know, I had one in college actually, and it was one of my lab teachers, uh, Mr. David Metz. And he taught me, uh, it was, um, electricity, uh, 101 or 102 lab. And it was kind of one of those things that uh, freshman level lab and we're going in there learning about different things with electricity and stuff. And if we had a question, we'd go to, to Mr. Metz and say, Hey, Mr. Metz, can you help me with this? And, uh, the thing he would always go back to you in, um, and it stuck with me forever. And I still mention it all the time. He would say, well, what did Google tell you? And you kind of look at him like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you know, you've got a problem. Did you research it? Did you look into it before you just came to me for an answer? And if you couldn't tell him, yeah, I went and looked and I, I tried this, this and this, and it didn't work. If you couldn't tell him that he wouldn't help you, he'd send you back to your lab station and say, all right, look it up and then come back to me. Um, so, you know, that's kind of always stuck with me. And, and, you know, I don't just go ask somebody for, for an answer right away. I like to be able to look into it and do my own research. And then if I need help, I'll do it. Um, but, you know, another good mentor I had was when I was an application engineer. Um, he'd been doing it for a while. And eventually he ended up, he was a senior engineer. He ended up being my boss later on as I was there. But, um, you know, Robert All, he was a, a great engineer there. And he was able to kind of help teach me some different things about switch gear and how to design it and how to read a one line, you know, and, and things like that. And he sat down and spent time with me and I kind of went through some of the ins and outs of, of being there. And I knew that if I ever had a question that I couldn't get an answer to, I could go sit down with Robert and he would take the time out uh, and spend some time with me and go over some stuff and, you know, help me fully understand the topic. I mean, that's, that's, that's so great, man. You, you mentioned, and I think in both of those um, situations, the one thing that stood out to me from hearing your your story was how willing they were to take time, right? And as as, as this country continues to grow and, and and manufacturing becomes more and more important, you know, we're going to have to be able to, to to prioritize taking that time to help others develop. So it's great, great, great examples uh, that you had there. So let, let's let's talk about the work that you're in right now and, and the stuff that the projects that you get involved with. What what gets you the most excited about in the future? 
Yeah. So, I mean, you know, with just how rapidly everything's growing and quickly manufacturers ramping up here in the United States, I mean, it's, I love being able to go into a customer and, and, you know, obviously I enjoy helping any customer with anything I can, but, you know, some of the times when the customer's got a new project coming up and they're like, Hey, we want to be able to do this. And, and how do we do it? It's a blank slate. How do we get from A to B here? Um, I love being able to kind of sit down with them and talk about their needs and then help them come up with a system, uh, you know, an automation or a power distribution system or both even to kind of get, you know, from A to B and, and help them figure that out and then be able to help them implement it uh, once they've made that decision and that purchase, um, kind of go and, and help them set it up. That's that's a lot of fun to me. And that's what I enjoy doing the most. So is that what you get the most fulfillment out of right now in your work? Yeah, absolutely. That and, you know, I've always been one that I, I enjoy being able to to teach and train others. Um, so, you know, I do a lot of, of training for not only customers, but even for our own employees at, at Eco. I, I do training for them to kind of help them understand and, and better themselves on certain topics. So um, I really enjoy being able to teach people things and just being able to see like that aha moment or that got it moment like when the, when it just clicks inside of their head and they realize that you know their face changes or things like that and they're like yeah i get it now and so i i really be, enjoy being able to help people get to that realization absolutely sounds like you'll be a great mentor to to people as you grow as well in your career and that, that's great we, we need definitely need more of that so let's talk about a, a highlight you, you got anything in your career so far that you that you just look back on and you say, man, that was really cool. I mean, it could be recent, it could be way back. Uh, anything you'd like to share? Yeah. So uh, back when I was a application engineer doing Switchgear, um, we had a, a large account that we'd been dealing with for years and years and years for a automotive manufacturer. Um, and the last time they would purchased large amounts of gear was in the late '90s to retrofit a lot of their plants. And this was in, um, you know, about 2011, 2012, they'd come back to purchase more gear and get it designed. And the spec hadn't really changed in those last 15 years. And so I was the application engineer working on it. And as I was working through it, I was going off of their specs as well as their old records and or the previous drawings. And I realized that there had been an error in um, what the application engineer before me had done in some of their protective relaying. And so I brought that up to the engineers that worked at this automotive manufacturer and they kind of went back and looked at it and like, yeah, you know, you're right. And while it didn't look good for the company that I worked for at the time, cause we had made an error, um, it was good to be able to kind of bring that in and show them like, Hey, this is what we did. This is what we need to do. And this is how we're going to fix it. So I was able to kind of um, come up with a plan, not only for the new equipment that I was designing, but also a retrofit plan for all that existing lineups that were in the field. There was about 50 or 60 lineups in the field um, that had to be retrofitted. So I was able to kind of help them do that and get them the protection level relay scheme that they needed. Um, and, you know, one of the things that my mentor there at the plant told me, at the time was, you know, not everybody's going to remember you for the mistakes that you've made, but what they are going to remember you for is how you fixed it. Um, so that kind of, you know, resonated with me that I was able to kind of help fix those errors and, and get them what they needed. Man, that, that sounds like that needs to be printed on a, uh, on a poster and put up in your, in the lab somewhere, man. That's great advice. That's killer. So let, let's talk about goals, man. We, we, just to shift gears a little bit, what's the personal goal you set and, and, and how do you, how do you track to them? Um, you know, so a personal goal is just to kind of, um, you know, learn more and, and kind of just expand the knowledge that I have and be able to pass that along to people. So, I mean, that's kind of one that's, you know, there's no real time limit on that one. I guess that's kind of a, a long-term lifetime goal to have, but, um, you know, just kind of, you can track it by just some of the different trainings and, and the amount of customers that I've helped and been able to show them different things. And, and when they get it, you know, there's, there's just one more person that I've been able to help. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's just, I know that's kind of a goal that I guess a lot of people would have, but that's, that's one of mine. Okay. 
let's let's think about the you know the, the field that you're in. You know, there there are a lot of, of of you know preconceptions of what engineers are and product managers are and things like that. What's a myth that you'd like to debunk right now? You have the stage. You can say, you know what, people think we do this, but this is not true. This is what is this is what is accurate. Is there anything that you'd like to to take advantage of this time and, and talk about here? Yeah, so I guess, you know, a lot of people, I'm, I'm an electrical engineer by degree from the great University of South Carolina. So, um, you know, a lot of people think engineers don't have fun and they just sit behind a computer with the glasses on and, you know, that typical, you know, they're a nerd or they just sit there and design robots and do things like that. But, uh, I mean, I, I work with several great engineers at our company and we all like to have fun. You know, we like to go out and and, you know, eat and drink and have fun and hang out with each other. And, and, you know, engineers are not just all those nerdy people that sit behind a computer or locked away in a lab. So, uh, you know, we know how to have fun as well. <laughs> Very good, man. Love it. Love it. So since you, you went there, let's, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about, you know, you personally. Uh, do you have any hobbies? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, uh, fortunately, I have a great wife, and uh, we have our, our four-year-old son. And um, a lot of my hobbies just include, um, you know, I like to go and um, I'm not real big into fishing or golf and things like that, but I do like to go blow stuff up and shoot stuff. Um, typical southerner, I guess. And uh, another one of my big hobbies and passions is uh, actually woodworking. Um, so I I enjoy being able to kind of go out into my shop with some wood and and build stuff. Um, you know, I've got some uh, some great outdoor Adirondack chairs that um, I don't think they're great, but everybody else that comes by and sees them loves them. Uh, and I've had a couple requests on building some for people, but uh, I really enjoy being able to do stuff like that. Um, so uh, I've built uh, several different kinds of furniture and stuff like that. And my son's at the age now where he's uh, he's getting more and more into being able to help daddy around the house and do things. So. I look forward to, you know, him being able to be out there in the shop with me and, and kind of help me build some some different furniture and fun projects. Absolutely, man. It sounds like you got some fun things going on uh, there outside of work, which is very important, man. You got to have a way to to kind of, you know, just get away from it all and to, to recharge your batteries. I've seen your chairs, by the way. They are awesome. So don't don't downplay yourself. Uh, you, you definitely have a skill there. So, uh uh, great. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, great stuff, man. Great stuff. So, if you, you know, just kind of shift from here real quick, a piece of advice that you that you like to give someone uh, that may be considering coming into this industry, what what would that piece of advice be? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the electrical industry, it's it's a you know, it's one of those old you know, good old boys club thing like that, and. When you first start in this industry, you're not going to know everything. And a lot of times, you know, you go call on some customers or, or talk to people at plants that have been doing it for a long time. They're going to want to test your knowledge and they're going to they're going to test you hard when you first get there and just kind of find out, you know, how full of yourself are you or how much do you really know and, and things like that. So just kind of be aware of that and be ready for that and don't get you know razzled by it like, you know, and it's OK if you don't know everything. Um, you know, I, I certainly don't know everything and, you know, if a customer asks me a question that I can't answer, I don't try and, and give them a, you know, a crap answer or things like that. I, I'll tell them straight up, like, you know, it's a good question and I don't really know the answer to that, but what I will do is I'll find out and get back to you. So, um, you know, if you don't know something and people are asking you that question, just be honest with them, uh, be honest with yourself. And then get find that answer out and let your customer know, you know, what you find out. Don't forget about them. Don't just brush it off and like, oh, you know, whatever. Actually come back to them and give them that answer because sometimes they could be testing you and they already know the answer. And once you tell it to them, they're going to have some more respect for you. Or it could be something that they honestly don't know. And you come back to them and then you've proven to them that you're a source of knowledge and, you know, you can get them some information that they need. So, um, you know, in both regards, you can build a good relationship that way. No, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, what, the, when you were talking, I had so many memories of, of me, my personal journey, but I, I specifically remember, uh, you know, graduating from Old Dominion and having a, a little hesitation to, to want to go out to, to industry and talk to engineers and 
um, end users because I was concerned with well, what if they ask a question that I don't know the answer to, right? And i never forget my mentor. Uh, he sat down and he said, what are you passionate about? You know, I'm right out of school and well, I like motorcycles. So he said, give me five minutes. And uh, he had me come into his office and he basically just broke down some, some basic questions around motorcycles. And you would think just by the questions he asked, that he was a, a motorcycle genius. Uh, so it was, it kind of opened my eyes up. Now his point was, all right, you know, you got to get out from behind your fear and just go accept, you know, just go learn. And it's okay if you don't know, uh, but go get that answer. So, and that was a push I needed to, to, to really just get out there. And you're right, man, we're not going to know this stuff. Technology is moving too fast for us to keep up with everything, at, you know, at all times. But being that resource is really important, so I, I, I'm really uh, that that answer resonated with me. So thank you for that. Um, I think I want to ask one question, and this 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 one has caught a few people off guard. If you could step into my shoes, what would you have asked yourself that I didn't? Um, so step into your shoes as a manager and ask you know somebody else that they didn't, uh, or the interviewer, I guess. Um, that's that's a good question. That definitely catches people off guard. Um, I have to think about that. I guess you would ask kind of um, that you were hoping maybe that we covered uh, that we had. No, I, I think we've we've kind of done a good job of going over you know who we are and what we are and why we enjoy doing what we're doing. Um, okay. Can't, can't really think of any other questions. Well, you're not the first one I stumped with that one, so that's okay. So let's <laughs> let, let's let's wrap it up here with on Eco Ask Why. We love to understand everybody's why, their purpose. You know, it just it gets to be deeper, uh, and versus just just having a job, just going in to to, to check a box. You know, you want to have some passion in life, and, and as much time as you spend at work, uh, in your in your career, you want to feel like you're heading in the right direction. So understanding that why is super important uh, and from anything from, uh, you know, your career to, to, your, to your marriage and you know, things like that, kids. So why do you enjoy the career path that you're on, Jonathan? Um, I mean, I, I do enjoy it a lot. Um, like I said, you know, I, I enjoy being able to go out to people and kind of help them understand some, some new things. And, you know, I'm learning every day that I do this. I learn something about, you know, this automation or power world that I didn't know. Um, so, you know, not only am I helping customers learn more, I'm also learning more and bettering myself for it. Um, you know, it's something I'm passionate about and something I enjoy doing. And, and I think, you know, not to kind of toot my own horn, but I think I'm good at it. So, um, you know, they only say that when you've got a job that you love doing, it's not really a job. So, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily view this as a job. I, it's something I enjoy doing. I look forward to going out and doing it every day. Um, but it, it also helps afford me a great work-life balance so that I'm able to spend time with my wife and family and son. Um, you know, I'm not tied to uh, my computer 24-7 or I'm not, you know, always on the go, never at home. So, um, I'm very fortunate in that aspect that the company I work for is a great company and I, you know, I've got a great manager, um, that's allowed me to do what I do and, and keep that work-life balance pretty well. Very good, man. Uh, well, I really appreciate you, you walking the listeners through that. Uh, it's, it's very important to understand the why and, and Jonathan, I really enjoyed, you know, he, uh, you've been a, uh, contributor for, for several of our podcasts on, on some really great topics. I know there are more to come that you're working on as well. Uh, love having you on, uh, and I really appreciate you taking the time and kind of getting, uh, letting our, our listeners understand uh, a little bit more about you. So really appreciate it. Yeah, hope you have a great day, and thank you for your time. Thanks, Chris. I really appreciate it, and I've enjoyed it as well. All right, go Gamecocks, right? Absolutely. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by an electrical equipment company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O. 
A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.